Michelle, great to see you again. Pleasure to see you, Pat. Thanks for having me. The last time we chatted, we were talking about your first quarter numbers and uh, the impressive bottom line numbers that came through in the first quarter. Now you've got your second quarter out there and you've continued that impressive performance. Revenue in particular, uh, I, I think I saw organic revenue growth of 20%. How did you get that kind of growth? Well, thanks, Pat. Uh, good question. We uh, well, we had a fantastic performance uh, through the first half of the year. Uh, our second quarter, actually, revenue was were up, uh, sales were up at forty two percent, and we're now at twenty two percent for the first six months of the year. Uh, we've achieved this uh, by being relevant and innovative with our clients. Uh, we are partners and advisors to all of our clients as we help them in, in their uh, quest to acquire uh, more clientele. Uh, proof of this is our the tenure of uh, our clients is over 10 years at this point in time. Uh, of course, we need to deliver uh, with excellence. Uh, this is paramount to, to stay and, and have the, the goodwill of, of our clients. Our omni-channel offering truly addresses market needs. Uh, our clients really appreciate what we've put out there. We've got legacy products. They're still performing very strongly because they're still working markets, so which is fantastic. But we also have a full fledge of digital services. And now we're introducing AI-based offering. All of I this- I wanna talk about that in a second, but I also yeah. wanna ask you, uh, you and I, touched on it briefly last time prospect media contributing to the bottom line or to the top line as yeah. well is that still the case it is yeah so both uh, market focus and prospect media uh, are performing very well at this point in time yeah okay let's look at the other side of the equation because it's one thing to increase revenue but you're also improving operating expenses in the order of 12 percent you and I chatted about this. You were getting rid of uh, some of your operations, but have you done more than just that? As you mentioned, we, uh, we've we lowered our expenses uh, year over year by 12%. Uh, in the first half of last year, 2023, we've put forward cuts. A uh, number of FTs were reduced. We consolidated uh, operations and procurement and realized savings uh, north of $600,000 in the process. These are not... Uh, these are now fully uh, active in, in our PNL, so we, we actually have that massive reduction year over year. Yeah, uh, I, I guess that's driving out efficiencies. How much more efficiency can you get out of the operations? At this point in time, uh, we're looking at uh, with the AI based offering that we're looking into. Uh, we would be able to grow our business by 15% without adding any resources. Wow. I also looked at your non-cash expenses, and they were $0.8 million. But at the same time, you still maintain positive cash flow of about $0.8 million as well. Impressive yeah. numbers. Yeah, so our uh, operating profit, or EBITDA, uh, stands... Uh, uh, 660000 for the first half of the year. Uh, if you add the non-cash element, which would be the share-based compensation, uh, it puts us at, at $800,000 EBITDA, which is our cash flow for positive cash flow for the, uh, the, uh, the six-month period. Michelle, I want to talk now about that artificial intelligence that you've touched on, because you see that as a growth area currently, and I suppose in the future, but you have other areas that you're looking at things like process automation would fit into that and and content management uh describe where you're going to focus your efforts next well we're we're looking at acquisitions that can be complementary to the current operations so uh, right now we're having a number of discussions with potential uh vendors or, or acquisitions um we we're looking in what I would call digital offerings uh, at this point in time that touch on AI and add complementarity, clientele complementarity to what we have right now. So the ability to sell or cross-sell services to all of our clientele. At the same time, 
while it's not a driving factor, but it is an important factor, is the ability to consolidate some of the back-end processes and get uh, additional efficiencies out of this or cost centers. We touched on it briefly because I, I loved your strategies. It's targeting intergenerational changes. You know, a whole generation that's retiring or moving out of the business and you're, and you're picking up the slack. How big is that marketplace? 300,000 boomers in our economy, in the Canadian economy, um, have businesses with 10 to 20 people. And most of them don't have a proper transition plan. And this is where we can come into effect. Uh, so there is a lot of companies available, and which makes uh, the choice at times a little difficult because we want to make sure that we have the right fit. Why, why come to Syscom? Why, why would somebody want to talk to you as opposed to anybody else in the acquisition business? Well, we have a proven team uh, of professionals and experts that can really grow the business. And as you sell your company for or the right amount of money, you're also now part of a public vehicle where you can get a second enhancement because part of your purchase price will, will be paid in shares. As the share price grows, you you sell your business for more money than you initially sold it for. When you do that shareholding um, uh, exchange, if you will, for a corporation, how long mm -hmm. typically are you expecting the shareholders to hang around and help you make the transition? Entrepreneurs are welcome to stay for as long as they want. So that's the first and foremost. And we want them to expand their role uh, within Syscom as we grow, as there'll be other uh, executive positions being created. This said, we want a minimum of two to three years to if the individual wants to retire uh, in order to affect a, an orderly transition. Uh, often in smaller businesses, the entrepreneur, the founder, uh, as the client relationships, we do not want to lose those client relationships. So making sure there are somebody seniors that, that have great relations and, and interactions with clients, aside from the entrepreneur, is key to future success. Michelle, the last couple of uh, conversations we've had, we focused on you know the bottom line and quarterly numbers coming out and those kinds of things. Uh, what can we expect in the future? More of the same in terms of the bottom line improving, or do we anticipate there'll be more acquisitions? And you did mention artificial intelligence as being an area. Yes, to both. <laughs> so uh, we, we do we do have a an acquisition mandate. So this is what this is what uh, we we came uh, together for. So we will pursue our acquisition, but at the same time, we do want to make sure that we have healthy organic growth year over year. Uh, with the businesses that uh, we own. Uh, of course, as we grow, um, the bottom line will increase by default. Uh, and uh, so we've had what I would call uh, initial expenses that are, are over-indexing versus the size of the business initially, which is normal. And as we grow, the corporate side, which is the Syscom side of the business, will become much smaller versus the operated the operations from the subsidiaries that uh, we will be running. Michelle, always a pleasure to chat. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Pat. Have a great day.